Greetings and welcome to our next app with Open Daylight and Topology Processing Framework Presentation. Where might it be handy to apply topo processing? For example, when you are handling multiple protocols at the same time. In Open Daylight, each protocol stores its data in separate topology. So if you take care of multiple protocols, you need to work with multiple topologies. Topo processing will help you overcome this problem. Topo processing can also help you when it comes to clustering. It can slice specified topologies so that you can have each cluster or shard work upon a specific slice. This way, you can also distribute the load of your hardware in cluster. Using filtered views, you can filter out all undesired information and focus only on data that you care about. Another feature is that you can transform your topology model from one to another, which can be used either for backward compatibility or just to convert the data into your desired format. So what really is Topo Processing? It is a project in Open Daylight which provides advanced topology-related functionality for upper-layer components and applications. The project started during Lithium release, and it contains around 5,000 lines of code. It uses binding independent data format for more modular attitude. It is built in Java SE, standard edition platform. And other than that, it uses Yang for data modeling. As we can see in the picture, you can imagine topo processing being a part of service abstraction layer where it uses core APIs and it provides advanced topology related functionality for upper layers, as described before. Let's take a closer look at what we mean by advanced topology related functionality. It is topology aggregation, topology filtering, link computation, and model-to-model -model conversion. By aggregation, we mean topology combination based on some common condition. Topology filtering deals with topology slicing. It can also be used for unnecessary data filtering. Link computation feature calculates overlay links based on links from underlay topologies. Because if you create an overlay topology, then overlay nodes are assigned new node IDs and underlay links cannot be simply copied to overlay topology because they would have no notion of created nodes. They would point to nothing. Link computation creates corresponding links between the overlay nodes. Model-to-model -model conversion helps in cases of model migration. It can translate data even into a model that is no longer supported. Moreover, it can translate data even into your own model, which might be really handy in case you don't want to migrate your existing model to any of those supported in open daylight. Can Topo Processing's functionality be extended? Yes, it can. One can write one's own script and create one's own aggregation or filtering condition. In the case of filtering, one can even register one's own filter that will do the filtration. In addition to that, one can provide a few classes that will extract selected data into new topology or even into a new model. There is a large scope of people that can take advantage of topo processing. It can help network administrators, cloud, telco, and service providers to manage and visualize their networks. It can also help ODL developers to implement new functionality based on provided operations. For demonstration, we prepared our own GUI application. It is based on Cisco's Next platform, which is a high-performance, high-quality framework. It focuses on visualizing network components. The Next framework has been open sourced thanks to the Next UI Toolkit project in Open Daylight. Now it is time for the demonstration of topo processing features. I will only briefly outline what today's use cases are about. Firstly, we start with a topology filtering example. Then we move to topology aggregation over one topology. After that, we show aggregation over two different topologies. And finally, we finish with a combination of filtering and aggregation over two topologies. First use case, filtration. In the left top corner is the field where we can specify the name of our overlay topology, which we want to create. We can also specify the model of this overlay topology. There are also four buttons below these fields, which are only presets used for our demonstration. In Topologies pane, you can see which topologies will be used as underlay topologies to create our new filtered overlay topology. The filters pane specifies which filters we want to apply on which target fields. In this case, we use a specify string type filter, which checks for equality of specified target field, in our case manufacturer, with some specific string value. 
I will describe other panels later. In this use case, we will use one underlay topology with the name OpenFlow Topo. When we click on the View button in the Topology pane, we can see what this underlay topology looks like. We can close Map View by clicking on the right arrows in the top right corner. When we click on the Send Request button, the map will rise again and our newly created overlay topology will be shown. It can be seen that in this topology, there aren't any links. It is because we haven't specified link computation. Second use case, aggregation inside. In this use case, it can be seen that we haven't specified any filter, but aggregation instead. There are two types of aggregation supported, unification and equality. Unification outputs all nodes, but those which can be aggregated are in aggregated form, while equality outputs only aggregated nodes. In the aggregation pane, we also set aggregation inside field to true. This means that the Topo Processing Framework will also try to find an aggregation match inside the marked underlay topology. Otherwise, it won't aggregate inside the same topology. As in filtration, we have to specify the target field according to what we want to aggregate. In this use case, we will use underlay topology with the name PSEP Topo, which has five nodes, but three of them have the same IP address. When we click on the Send Request button, the map will rise with our newly created aggregated overlay topology. It can be seen that node 1 is aggregated from three nodes, PSEP 3, PSEP 4, PSEP 5. Third use case, aggregation of two topologies. In this use case, it can be seen that we use two underlay topologies. These topologies we want to aggregate according to the IP address. In the link computation pane, we also specify that for the link calculation, we want to use both underlay topologies to provide information about the underlay links, so that we can preserve this information in the new overlay topology as well. For the underlay topologies, we use OpenFlow Topo, which we have already seen in Filtration Use Case, and BGP Topo, which look like this. When we send a request, the created overlay topology will look like this. It can be seen that some of the nodes from both underlay topologies are aggregated to one node in the overlay topology. Fourth use case, aggregation with filtration. A request in this use case looks the same as in the third use case, but we also add a filter and specify that we want to use this filter on BGP Topo Underlay Topology. The result will look like this. It can be seen that some nodes from the underlay topologies were aggregated, but some of them were filtered out. 